guys you're welcome back hope you guys are feeling good my name is Bukumi Bike Kran thank you so much for clicking what if I'm wrong and when I think about this question I think about the fact that there are two very interesting characteristics that have always been attributed to this God one is omnibenevolence optimal love optimal compassion optimal mercy optimal concern for the well-being of others and the other is omniscience knowing everything that could possibly be known about anything from any point of view at any time in any context and one inescapable conclusion that follows from this is that if this being exists it knows me I mean really knows me understands me as well as I can possibly be understood this is not a mystery he is not sitting up in heaven racking his brain trying to figure out why Scott can't seem to believe in him this God would be acutely aware of my history, of the causal chain of events and experiences that cumulatively contributed to the development of my entire personality and psyche and outlook on life. This being would understand impeccably that I am nothing more and nothing less than a product of that which I've experienced. Every interaction that I've ever had that changed me or forced me to think differently, down to the exact moment in my life which caused me to care about philosophy and religion and theology and the afterlife. This being would have a perfect appreciation for that. God would understand intimately my reasoning and my thought process and how I arrived at the conclusions I did. Even if Christians don't, he would know my views on morality and ethics and understand specifically why I think it more virtuous to approach religious claims critically and prudently than to accept them at face value on faith. He would understand why I think that I've lived a good life, why I think that I've made good choices, even if Christians don't. He would be aware of all the actions and all the characteristics that I've seen attributed to him by Christians as well as scripture, and why those actions and characteristics seem undeniably incompatible to me, not just with one another, but with the observable world. He would know about the time in my life when I actually picked up a Bible and made it a point to read the whole thing. And he would know the hundreds of verses I came upon which, which I found horrifying or absurd or completely incompatible with the notion that this was inspired by a just and loving being concerned with ensuring our salvation. Even if Christians don't. So if I found myself standing before this being, it goes without saying that my immediate reaction would be one of complete shock, complete and utter shock. I would be absolutely floored if I found out with certainty that the Christian God specifically exists. And the first question, the, the first thought that would even enter into my mind, I know, would be, what was wrong with my reasoning? I would beg, I would plead, regardless of whether I was on my way to heaven or hell, just to know what the flaw was in my thinking, where along the way were the mistakes I made that led me to the wrong conclusion. I would give anything to know that. I would give anything to know the answers. And of course, this God would know all too well I took truth very seriously in my life. I never believed anything simply because I wanted it to be true or because I thought it would be beneficial in some way to assume it was true. And likewise, I never doubted any claim simply because I preferred it not to be true. But I would take comfort in knowing that the being responsible for judging me, for evaluating me, and ultimately deciding my fate, knows me so perfectly that I don't have to make any excuses for myself. The omniscience of this being would allow me to feel perfectly represented. I don't have to plead a case. I don't have to persuade anyone that my intentions were pure. These things are already known to this being. It would be known that I never doubted God's existence out of rebellion or spite or disregard for authority. It would be known that I'd have preferred the existence of a loving God all along and would have had no problem obeying the commands of this loving God. But I just found too many problems inherent in the concept. Too many contradictions, too many holes, too many propositions that require special pleading or circular reasoning or ad hoc speculation and that I simply didn't observe anything about reality 
that couldn't have been the result of natural cumulative processes. It would be known that my cognitive faculties do not allow me to choose what I am and am not convinced is true about reality, that my disbelief is an involuntary reaction to what I perceived as a deficit of evidence for God's existence. And most importantly, it would be known that I thought it insufficient and even immoral to pretend that I believed in this being simply because I feared punishment or sought reward. And when I take into consideration what follows naturally from the knowledge attributed to this being, and I combine that with what follows naturally from the compassion attributed to this being, it's difficult for me to conceive that this being wouldn't be, in some sense, proud of me and pleased with the way that I've employed the intellect and the moral sense with which he would have endowed me, even if it turned out that I was wrong. I have a hard time imagining that this God would be offended by me and my thought process offended enough to allow for me to endure unbearable torment for all of eternity, and not as a form of discipline or correction or redemption, since it never ends. There's nothing constructive about hell. You don't come out of hell a better person. You don't come out at all. And so the only reason for the existence of such a thing would be vengeance. Of course, according to the Bible and according to most Christians, hell is exactly where I'm headed. No matter the life I lead, or the choices I make, or the intentions that I have, if I don't at least think that a God exists, well, sucks for me. And in the meantime, you know, extreme rapists and murderers and child molesters are welcomed into heaven with open arms so long as they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior before their demise. And if it turns out that this is the case, And that's okay, too, because I, I don't know how I would be able to handle spending eternity alongside a being whose idea of compassion and fairness makes me sick to my stomach, a being whose empathy would be so easily trumped by his vanity. So that's my answer. Good thing I'm not wrong. All right, so I don't know if this guy is an atheist, but he's just trying to imagine things. Like he's just trying to weigh options. That what if if atheism, atheists are wrong? You know they have this belief that there's no God. We just came to this world. There's nobody that you know. So what if at the end of the day? they they leave the world and they meet with god how will your reaction be so he's just trying to let people understand that they should not totally shut down them their no they should not totally shut down their heart they should have that little belief that there's somebody called god out there so that later on when that time comes it's not be difficult for you to plead of there's, there's a way you you'll be shocked and, and you'll not be able to know how to react you get it so he's just trying to let us understand that you know we should try to believe that it's god because we didn't just come to this world on our own our parents do not conceive us based on their power it's not their power it's not their might it's through the help of a divine person that we cannot see and that is god so let me know your point of view guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.